Hi, good evening all of you. Today we are here to discuss again some key questions and their answers with related to the process validation. This is the second uh, uh, session for question answers for process validation. If you are interested in the first question, I will share the link in the description. You can go through that. So what questions we are going to discuss today? Let us see these questions. So again, today also we selected three questions. The first question is, in the validation master plan, do we need to specify about developing the acceptance criteria for qualification and validation activities? So here the question is when we are preparing the validation master plan or VMP, in the VMP whether we need to specify that during process validation what will be the action uh, acceptance criteria, during equipment qualification what will be the acceptance criteria, during cleaning validation what will be the acceptance criteria. So my point is how we are going to uh, you know develop the acceptance criteria for specific qualification and validation activity that has to be specified in VMP. So the question is whether it is required or not that is what we are going to discuss in line with the current guideline references, current guideline expectations. Second question is, second question is somewhat tricky and I know that many companies don't follow this. During dissolution testing of the process validation batches, if the results are complying to the specification but less than 100%, for example maybe 85%, is it required to continue the test to evaluate final drug release from the product. So this is with respect to the you know when we are performing the dissolution test for process validation batches and suppose the limit for dissolution is let us say not less than 85 percent and you are getting some 85, 87 percent or 90 percent and it is very within the limit and then what happened we stop the dissolution and we report it correct. This is all companies are doing this. But what are the FDA expectations, whether we should run further and evaluate whether there is 100% drug release or not, is it required. So that also we are going to discuss with respect to the FDA expectation, okay. I will share you the guideline reference also while discussion. This is somewhat tricky question, again I am telling you many companies don't follow this. The third question is the development report and technology transfer document. So development report like PDR and all and uh, or otherwise the techni technology transfer document. So these documents who should approve this document? Whether approved should be only by the site quality or some, ad some other agency or some other counter department should approve. That is what the question behind this and believe me this also we are going to discuss in line with the regulatory guideline expectations. Hope the questions are clear to you. Before moving ahead, just a short disclaimer that whatever I am discussing in line with the current guideline expectation, when you want to implement it, please refer the current guidelines only, right? Because this may be in the video form in the YouTube for long period. So you need to refer the current guideline. So let us discuss about the first question. In validation master plan, VMP, do we need to specify about how to develop acceptance criteria for qualification and validation activities? Answer is sure shot. Yes. Many VMP I have audited, checked, I found that VMP lacks this requirement in many for many companies. The answer to this is yes and the reference is Utralex Volume 4 Annex 15 and also PIX guide also same same requirement is there. The VMP or equivalent document should define the qualification validation system and include or reference information on at least the following. So they, they have specified that VMP should contain some points. So there are so many points are specified and one point is guidance on developing acceptance criteria it's clearly specified in the guideline. You can check the guideline. So many companies lack this point in the validation master plan but you need to have this head guidance on developing acceptance criteria under this head you have to specify that how the acceptance criteria will be derived 
for area validation or uh, sorry uh, the area validation or uh, you know uh, what type of uh, acceptance criteria will be there reference to which guideline or for process validation uh, how you are going to design the acceptance criteria you can specify the general like you know for process validation you can uh, follow the acceptance criteria in line with the uh, you know the uh, 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 standard specification respect to specification in case of uh, analytical method validation similar way general you can say not a specific because the acceptance criteria will be different for different cases but here the point is how you are going to develop the acceptance criteria that strategy should be specified you can specify uh, respective uh, you can specify respective specification you can specify respective guideline number you can specify some generic uh, like uh, in cleaning validation you can specify that what is your developing the acceptance criteria strategy so you can specify whatever you are going to follow like matrixing and all then a, a 10 ppm and a pd permitted delay exposure whatever whatever that specific information should be specified under this head this is the expectation of ugmp and pix guide many companies i have checked the validation master plan and they fail to comply this requirement okay the next question is somewhat tricky so let us discuss on the next question okay most even i will say the all of the companies whatever i have seen i have audited more than 500 sites till date but this question this is nobody is complying but this is what the fda expectation let us discuss about the question and what fda expects i just copy and pasted from the guideline okay so question is during dissolution testing of the process validation batches if the results are complying to the specification but less than 100 percent for example 85 percent is it required to continue the test to evaluate final drug release from the product the answer to this is yes as per fda inspection guide we have to continue the test in the review of resolution test result it is important to eventually see results very close to 100 percent dissolution that is what clearly specified in the guideline so i am just reading the guideline okay in some cases manufacturers will profile the dissolution results only to the specification so normally the manufacturer will do the profiling right so up to the specification only however if lower but still acceptable limits or acceptable results are obtained it is important to continue the test very clear message given to fda given by fda further again fda is clarifying the same thing okay what fda is clarifying it is important to continue the test so during when you are performing uh, you are continuing the same resolution test after achieving the your time point and complying to the requirement you have to still continue this can be performed by increasing the speed of apparatus so you can increase the speed the main purpose is whether you are able to uh, you know you are you are able to uh, recover 100 percent drug because in unit dose 100 percent drug is added right so whether you are able to recover the 100 percent that is the expectation behind this these are all fda guideline copy and paste reference i have taken okay if you want you can refer the current guidelines if a product completely dissolves yet only results in value of 85 percent it may indicate some problem with the test so the point is when the drug is the drug product is continuously dissolved and still the results you are getting 85 percent not 100 percent that it indicates some problem with the test likewise high dissolution results like 115 percent also indicate some problem with the test obviously unusual or atypical results should be explained in the validation report such so type of atypical or unusual results should be explained in the validation report this is what expected by us fda very clear statements are there but still many companies not following this requirement okay now the third question today's last question the development report and or a technology transfer document should be approved by the site quality only or some other uh, department head 
should involve in the approval the answer to this is no that means what only site quality approval is not required you need to have some other additional person's approval on this document so if the development report or technology transfer document is approved by the site quality only then you are not complying to the WHO GMP requirement because WHO GMP guideline expects that a development report and or a technology transfer document formally reviewed and approved by research and development personnel. So it should be reviewed and approved by research and development personnel and formally accepted by manufacturing, engineering and quality personnel. So here two points I want to touch upon. One point is the you know uh, product de development report and technology transfer document should be approved by the research and development personnel. If you want to approve by site quality, no problem. Additional approval by site quality, uh, you can have the uh, approval, approval. You can have the additional approval by site uh, head quality or site quality, but. The first approval on the document should be by the R&D person. And second thing, when the uh, you know technology transfer document or PDR is shared to the site, on that the manufacturing person signature, engineering person signature, and quality person signatures are required. But I have seen that many product development reports and uh, technology transfer document, the engineering signatures are missing engineering signatures are not taken care so this also point i want to clarify with the who gmp guideline expectations hope i explain these questions very clearly and uh, you got the answers to all the questions so before closing ahead thank you so much and please i request all of you to subscribe this uh, youtube channel so that you will have a free learning platform i will be going on putting the lot of uh, clarification on different topics so please subscribe this and uh, one more thing you can share this to your colleagues so that they also can get clarity on these aspects thank you thank you so much and ensure all time compliance thank you